there's gonna be some exceptions with subcooling, such as if we have a ductless system, if we have liquid receivers, and several other exceptions that we're gonna to have to subcooling. However, this is about making the notes and getting you building that platform. There's gonna be a whole lot more information we're gonna talk about with superheat and subcooling as we go through this video, other methods of charging as well. Now, if you don't like that, it's fine. You can skip to the very video. The notes are gonna be right there. You can pause it and make notes. Whatever works best for you. And I can't put every single thing on there. I'm just putting what I feel is the most important to help you reference it and to build that solid foundation. So this video isn't gonna be a fun, exciting video, but this is what I do with my students. I wanna make sure that they're learning. We're gonna make notes. Now, these notes are gonna be your reference guide. I already know this information I'm writing up here. I'm gonna take time and write this out so you can see the importance. What I want you to do at home is writing this information out as well. Make it a lot nicer than what I'm doing. I'm horrible with handwriting. It's gonna be spelled wrong, it's just part of it. But make sure you can find these notes. Number one, know the information. Number two, know where to find it. So these notes can be used as a study guide for you to study it, or they can be used as a reference guide for you to reference this information later. If you use this reference guide, make sure you know how to find it. Put tabs on it so you can find that information when you need it. If you're at a job site and you're doing something and you think you know it and you're stressed out because you're trying to get this done and you get all this pressure on you, being able to get those notes and find them, don't take them to you in front of the unit, but go back to the truck, pull them up real quick, find those notes, and at least use the crutch until you get it fully down. It's going to help you. Now we're talking about subcooling, so make sure we put this in red, red for high pressure. We're thinking of the liquid line, the small line. Talking about subcooling, this is what we're thinking about. So let's think about subcooling. So first off, we're just going to write the top subcooled liquid. Subcool liquid, write it in red, red for subcooling, red for submarine. So let's put the formula up there next. We're going to have liquid saturated. Ideally, you already know that saturated is PSIG converted to temperature, but also we want to add another word. We haven't talked about this yet, but we're going to need it soon. We're going to put do here. Do. Liquid saturated, we want the dew saturated. When we get there, you're already gonna have these notes ready. It's gonna make sense right now. You're like, what is this guy talking about? Just bear with me. So it's liquid saturated temperature, liquid saturated blank degrees Fahrenheit, minus our actual liquid line temperature, blank degrees Fahrenheit, equals a sub-cooled liquid. So what we're thinking about in this is we can just plug our numbers in. If we have this formula and you can't remember the formula, you don't have the digital gauges, you don't have the app, you don't have all the fancy equipment, you can just simply write your numbers in. Liquid saturated, liquid, red, PSIG converted temperature, and you write that number down. Then you get your actual liquid line temperature. Oh, I've had students before that say, what is an actual liquid line? Well, find it. Here's the actual, you could actually touch it. It's a number we can touch. Saturation is a conversion. This is a line we can actually touch. We can actually put a thermometer on. What is the temperature of this actual line? So we put the temperature there. Then you take this number minus this number, boom, there's your subcooled liquid. Very, very important. Next, let's go ahead and put the definition for subcooling because I find that this really helps people understand it. People say, I don't like learning definitions, but the definition of subcooling really breaks it down to exactly what you need to know. And it's the amount of sensible heat removed from a liquid below saturation. If you remember that sensible is measurable, so here's our saturated, we remove heat down, so our actual number is here, that's our subcool liquid, how much heat we pulled away. We can measure that, we can measure subcooling. All right, how much subcool, we, this also is going to be representing the condenser, it represents what's happening outside. And if you want, you can also add the notes in here. It's taking place from the very end of the condenser to the metering device. Now, when we get to refrigeration, we're going to modify a little bit. But for residential, from the last few rows of that condensing, it may the last row, one or two rows, all the way through the liquid well and to the metering device. That's where it's, it's taking place, but it's still the number we're getting is representing what's happening in the condensing coil. So we got target. Let's think about how we're gonna find the target subcooling. So the target subcooling 
is going to depend on the metering device. It's very important if we have a TXV or a TEV, whichever one you want to call it, it's the same exact metering device. But if you, and if you want to draw a picture of it there, if we have that, that's very important. For a TXV or a TEV, we want to refer to the manufacturer's instructions. Refer the manufacturer instructions or also the data sheet. Sometimes on the side of the unit, it'll tell you. Carriers great about putting exactly what subcooling they want. Different brands have different things. Sometimes you have to really search to find it. So manufacturer, we're going to put the manufacturer info. And if you absolutely can't find it, you've done everything else, 10 is acceptable, but usually you can find it. If your battery's running low on your phone, you can't get the research, can't get the numbers, we can guess, but guessing is not a great habit. Sure, we've all done it, but you want to be able to find those numbers, get in the habit of finding that numbers. Over time, you're going to get a pretty good feel of, hey, I know this is a carrier high-end efficiency. It's going to have this number here. Here's a Ream or Rudd. Here's a Linux. And you'll start having a good feel because you've looked it up. And some people make a little list. Hey, on this model unit, this is my subcooling I usually get. That's fantastic. Leave some space here in your notes for that information. So target subcooling for a fixed orifice is a little bit different. We're going to refer to the chart that references the outdoor temperature. It's not as important with the fixed horse, but we still want to look at that number. It's really important for us to look at it. That subcooling is going to be much higher at a lower outdoor temperature, and my subcooling will be much lower at a lower outdoor temperature. Uh, the greater the temperature is outside, the greater the pressure is pushing that liquid out of the condenser, the lower the temperature is outside, the less pressure there is pushing the refrigerant out of the condenser. That's how that ties together with a TXV because it's always adjusting. It's pretty close. I mean, it's really good about staying in that sweet range. So next is, let's talk about if we have too much subcooled liquid. Our subcooled liquid is too high. So we have a high subcooled liquid. High subcooled liquid, we're going to reword this to a flooded condenser. It's the easy one. Flooded condenser. So if we have a flooded condenser, let's think of some things that can cause that. One thing that we know for sure that can cause that and is very likely is that we have a overcharged system. We still want to look at superheat and subcooling both, so we look at them together, but these are some of the things. Number one is usually an overcharged system. That means we will typically want to look at both sides, but we need to recover refrigerant. Don't vent refrigerant. You also want to look at the superheat to make sure we're balanced, but an overcharged system will definitely cause high subcool liquid in the condenser. Some other things that will cause high subcool liquid, we can get a restriction. We can have a dirty condensing coil. We can also have the air from the condenser recirculating. Somebody built a cover on top of it. Maybe they installed it under a porch. Things like this cause the air to circulate back around. So we're going to put air recirculation. Uh, we're also going to put another word over here for us to think about what's happening with this system is non-condensables can give you a high subcooling. So we're going to make this little note here, non-condensables. That means impurities. If you need to know that, add that word in it. Impurities in the system. It's going to give you a higher head pressure than you need, so it throws your formulas off to actually be looking like it's a flooded condenser, but it's non-condensables. Impurities in that system. These are things that definitely cause high sub... Some other things that can cause high subcooling is a stuck metering device. The metering device can be stuck closed. That one also really falls under restrictions, but let's go ahead and add that. The metering device stuck. Stuck closed, it's not opening, so the refrigerant backs up in the condenser. Uh, we can have a head pressure control issue, so we'll put that on here. A head pressure control. We'll talk about more about those later on. We also have an issue with a low ambient kit or a low ambient temperature. The outdoor temperature is simply too low, so we're going to call it a low outdoor temperature. I prefer the words low ambient, so we're going to add that word too in quotations, ambient. Ambient is the temperature around, so the outdoor, the temperature around the outdoor area. 
Uh, and also we'd have a low flow at the evaporator. So we don't have enough airflow at the evaporator. So it's called a low load or a low airflow. So evaporator has a low load. And then we're also going to put a note, AKA airflow. So we don't have enough airflow across the evaporator coil. We're not picking up enough heat. We're not using a refrigerant right. So we're stacking refrigerant over there in the condenser. That can cause that as well. So let's look at some other things now for some low subcooled liquid. Low subcooling can also be what we refer to as a starved condenser. Not enough refrigerant in our condenser. So we're going to put starved condenser. Let's go through some things that can cause a starved condenser. Um, insufficient airflow around the condensing unit or it needs cleaning. So we put the, the condensing coil. Needs cleaning. I know we also put it up here as well because I've seen it cause both sides. I've had people argue with me that it's only one or the other. I've seen it in both occasions cause that. So it depends on where you're checking that airflow reading from. So that's, that's the key to it is where you're reading those airflows. So that's a big part of it. Um, also a metering device that's overfeeding. So a metering device that's overfeeding. Overfeeding menu device. Let's think about a, a fixed orifice that's too big. That fixed orifice can be too large. We could also have a TXV that is stuck open, so it's just overfeeding. And let's think about that sensing bulb. The sensing bulb isn't on there all the way, so the sensing bulb is going to think that there's another issue. So let's put over here sensing bulb. All right, so look at a few other things. Um, an undercharged system is definitely really your, probably your number one reason for a, a low subcooling, not enough refrigerant. So we're gonna put low on charge. That's a really big one, very, very important. Uh, geez, I think that pretty well covers most of them for a low subcooling, but now you can go back and reference this. And as you learn more things that can cause that, add those to your notes and don't be afraid to rewrite your notes and leave room. Maybe leave room for the chart that goes with a fixed orifice for your fixed orifice subcooling. And yes, if you haven't watched the videos, there is. Go back and see that. Uh, see how to find what your TXV, what your uh, subcooling should be for a TXV. Find this information. Number one, know the answer. Number two, know where to find it. And then test yourself. Put some of these in flashcards. Make sure you're getting that information because we're going to be talking about this a lot. And I'm just going to, if anybody asks, I'm going to reference them back to this video. This video is not the most fun, but this is what I do with my students. I make them write it. I've already written this stuff before. I want you to write it. That's the purpose of writing this down. And yeah, it's sloppy and misspelled. Make it nice. Make your version really good. Be proud of your notes. Make your notes your first reference guide.